Hello everyone. Welcome to Let's DevOps. I am Sumit and today we are going to discuss about parallel processing using PowerShell. Further we will learn how to run a multiple ARM templates or a command in parallel using PowerShell job. For all the demo and discussion, I'll be following this article. You can find the link of this article in video description. So let's start with the introduction. So in this article, first we will learn the basic of PowerShell job, how we can run it. And further, we will set up a multiple ARM template execution in a parallel using PowerShell job. Let's understand the use case. So we had a requirement to build multiple Azure resources like a VM or a storage account using ARM template. So in the beginning, we tried using a PowerShell to call those ARM template sequentially. And that was taking a lot of time because it has to wait for the second execution because it was running sequentially. So when we used to create a multiple VM like a 10 or 20, it used to take a lot of time, right? Because if you run sequentially, once the first VM gets created, then it will trigger the second one. And that part we need to improve. Keeping this use case in a mind, so we need to do an improvement, right? So if we have options to run execution in parallel, we can achieve that, right? So let's explore the option of PowerShell job. PowerShell job helps to run multiple commands simultaneously in a separate process or a thread. So a command can be anything. Command can be maybe you are calling another script or maybe you are running set of script itself and everything that you want to run in a background, you don't want to interrupt the, uh, the console of our PowerShell or execution. You just wanted to proceed and run all that process you wanted to uh, execute as a background. Then you basically create a PowerShell job. Now coming to why and when to use a PowerShell job. So this is helpful for automating a repetitive task and improving the performance. So it helps to run a script or a task in a background without blocking a PowerShell console or a terminal. So basically if you want to run, if you want to run your code snippet 10 times, you just need to invoke 10 times in a background and it will all run in a parallel. Okay. So let's talk about the job architecture. So if you see here, in a, in, a, in a computer, there will be a PowerShell terminal, right? And whenever you create a job, it can basically create a separate session. So assume that if I want to create three different job, I will basically create three different session. And all those sessions can run independently and also the parallelly. So yeah, so assume that I have one, the main PowerShell script, and under that I want to call a specific command or a, another deployment, then I'll create a job. And that job can be maybe created multiple times, like multiple job you can create. So basically assume that in this example, we have created three different job and these three different job will run parallelly. Okay. Now let's understand what are the different command we have in a PowerShell job. So first is a start job. Uh, with the help of this particular command itself, we create a background job in a new session on a local computer. Get job basically, it will give the status of your uh, job which you created. Receive jobs, it gives the result of your background run. Like once it gets completed, your execution gets completed and you want to see the logs or the detail, you just use the receive job. Stop job itself again, it says that if you want to stop your background job, you just use it. Wait job is to, you will basically, if you want to suppress the command prompt until the job completed, then we use the wait job and remove job again. It's just to remove your background job. So since we talked about the start job, which basically runs on a local computer in the sense, maybe if you are running on an agent, it will run on the agent. But assume that if I want to invoke uh, some of the background job on, in a remote system, like basically I'm running from my local and I want to invoke a background job on a, on, a, on a VM or a remote VM on a cloud, then I need to use the invoke command with the help of start the job. So with the help of this combination, you'll be able to create a background job remotely. Okay. So now let's understand uh, the example and then I will uh, also show you uh, how it runs in a local. So if I say that, okay, start job and then if I say script block, whatever the script you defined, it will run in a background and again the get job is to get job and then wait job with the id 
you will see this the execution results okay so we will now try all the command one by one and here i have given this code snippet you can uh, maybe the, the the logs so you can also try on your side right now let's try to create some a uh, job the the power cell background job and let's see how it works okay so i have opened uh, the power cell command and then i will try to just use a job and then start job and then i will use a script block where i can define the command that i wanted to run as part of the background process so let me try to run the get process so basically uh, when we run it it will try to run this particular command get process in a background okay so right now if you see that the console came out right so although it is running it doesn't wait for that right? it didn't wait for that and it just comes out it means that that particular job is running in the background so let's try to see the status of the job so if i say get job now if you see it's it is running uh, as a background job here you can find the detail of your job like job id is 5 uh, that is a job name and then this is a background job type and currently it is running okay so let's try to get job so assume that if i want to see the status of the job right now if you see it is just displayed right so whatever it came out now let's again try to see the get job and let's see the status so now if you see the status now it is completed it means that the job which was running in the background it's already completed and if i want to uh, basically remove this particular job just i'll need to do that uh, the get job and then remove again i will do get job so i should not not see any job now right? it's coming as a blank so this is some of the basic command uh, that we can use it while creating a background job okay so since we use the script block while creating our job so let's understand what is the script block so script block helps to define a command you want to execute as part of the background job you can basically run or define multiple commands as well. So if you notice in this particular uh, job, I have defined a script block and I have added three different commands. The first is the write host. Second is the get services where I'm trying to fetch the service which is running, which is in the running state. And also I'm trying to find the services which is in the stop state, right? So let's try to run this, okay, in our command. So I'll just copy this parcel. Uh, okay, so it ran already. Now let's try to get job. So it's also completed. So let's see the the full log. Okay. Now if you see, it is displaying all the list of services which we have, which is in the running state as well as in the stopped state. And also it should say the, the, the print, right, running multiple command under a single job. So this is the, the right host which we added in a command like this one, right. So basically this is how we use uh, the script block uh, to define, we can define multiple commands in it. And then you can basically execute uh, uh, in a background. Okay. Now let's talk about the argument list. So argument list is very important for us because as we know that when we create a job, basically it creates a new power cell session. And when it creates a new power session, it doesn't contain or hold any variable that you created from a parent, right? So basically when we create a job, it creates a new session and that does not hold any uh, variable or any context or a setting that you set it up in the parent session. So assume that in this scenario, if you want to pass some of the value uh, as a parameter, then in this case you use argument list. So if you see in this example, I have uh, declared two different variable, value one and value two. 
and then I want to basically contain or use this particular value in a script block or in a in a background job in this case I need to pass that value as an argument list and with the help of argument 0 and the, the array of arguments 1 and 2 we can pass like this okay so first we maybe use it as a value 1 value 2 we define a variable and then when we create a job we pass those value as an argument list and this is how we use it's very important because sometimes if you need to pass some information from your parent session to the, the child one then in that case you need argument list itself to pass that information okay now let's try to run this in a powershell and then see how it works okay so i open uh, the powershell isc and let me paste it here okay so before uh, running like uh, argument list let's try to not to pass as argument list let's try to remove this and see whether it is printing it or not okay so assume that in the i want to basically display this two variable value which is uh, i am calling from this particular session itself okay so now if i run this basically this two value is getting stored in this particular session right and when i run this the job the start job as a background since it will create a new session it will not hold the information of this so let's try to run and see okay so i'll run this right now if you see here it already ran so let me try to do a get job and then receive job receive job see the value is coming as empty right because we have defined this value in this particular session and whenever we are creating a job it is creating a new session which it will not have the value so in this case only we use argument list so let me set it up now and then we we basically pass as a parameter the way we use to do it with a function okay. and then here instead of value one we say that dollar args And this is the okay now let's run this okay now see now it it contains the information because we are passing that as, as a argument list okay so now we have understood the basic of the powershell job uh, what are the different command we have how we use a uh, script block how we use argument list let's see how we can basically you make use of this particular uh, the feature from powershell to implement or to run multiple arm template basically that is our use case and then we run all of the arm templates parallelly so yeah for a solution we are going to use a powershell job and this is the architecture so if you notice here we are creating multiple parameter file during runtime and we have one template file that is basically getting called with each parameter file and that combination of each param with the template file we are creating a job and all of job can run parallelly assume that i need to create a three different vm right i'll create a three different parameter file and then whenever i'm calling with a template i am running basically as part of the job okay so for three different vm maybe three different job we have and all of them can run parallelly independently in this case the time of creating the vm will take less right compared to running sequentially okay so this is the architecture which we implemented maybe in your case you will have a separate parameter file or template file also that is also possible you can assume that if i want to run uh, the template for maybe storage account vm all together that also can be doable but this is the use case which we had where we need to update the parameter file for each vm and then we need to call through the arm templates template file and we used to create multiple job in parallel and that's how we create maybe 10 or 20 vms all running in a parallel within a five or less than five minutes okay so if you want to try this you just need to go to the arm template here and here you can see there are three different file 
one is this power cell find second is the parameter dot json and third is the template dot json so in the parameter dot json if you notice i uh, have tokenized the storage account name in your case maybe if you want to tokenize some different value that also you can tokenize and as part of the powershell script first we update this parameter file with the tokenized value and then we run it based on our requirement so let's try to open this powershell here we are just giving the resource group name under which you wanted to create the resource and then template file you can always uh, uh, update uh, if you want to store in your local and you're running from your local that you can give if you want to store in your uh, repo that also you can give a path so as of now i have just uh, hard coded that path and the parameter file base is like nothing but the the, the file or the folder where your the parameter file will get created dynamically or during the runtime because you have tokenized the parameter file and if based on your uh, uh, the count you will basically needs to create those parameter file first uh, and then it will run the ARM template. So this is the uh, the for like assume that if I want to run this particular ARM template five times then I'll just give an account as a five and here if you notice first I'm trying to create a different deployment name also because that is required uh, and uh, then I'm updating the, the tokenized value and creating a the parameter file new parameter file. Uh, after updating the tokenized value and then we are running the the background process so he, since here um, i have run it on my local so i didn't need to provide the connect is and all but that also you can specify in your case and that example i have given in the appendix so here you can always configure that okay so that's all for the today's discussion if you have any issue in your configuration you can write in your comment box i'll be happy to help um, thank you thanks for watching bye bye